All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome into the Homegrown Happy Hour podcast. Joining me this week are two very special guests. I've been looking forward to having them on here. Uh, last time, I wasn't too tech savvy. It took me a little while to figure out this Zoom, and we finally have figured out the Zoom thing, so it's good to see these two's smiling faces. I feel like I haven't seen them in forever, but welcome on the king and queen of music whenever it comes to the East Kentucky area. Miss Luna and Mr. Laidback Country Picker, or as I know him, David and Teresa Prince. How y'all doing? We're doing great. Man, that was a pretty lofty yeah. introduction there. <laughs> I, you might want to scale that back just a little bit. I, I'll edit it afterwards. Don't, yeah, don't worry. Don't We're worry. doing even better now. Yeah, good, good to see you, buddy. Yes. Hey, you. It's, it's good to see y'all. Like I said, I, I feel like we haven't seen each other in forever, especially with everything going on. Last time we talked, it was right when all of this was first kicking off and a lot has happened since then what have y'all been into Jeez, i've mowed a whole lot of grass between <laughs> then and now well it goes in shifts i mean yeah. like uh you know of course there's the like when all of this started you're not doing anything you yeah know? Uh, you know we were trying to figure out how to teach on zoom uh we were doing most of our teaching that way but you know as far as like doing anything you know we we gardened yeah we put out a good garden last year we, what are uh, what all y'all growing in the garden well you know things <laughs> things people grow <laughs> <laughs> Well, we were big tomatoes, big. potatoes, uh, zucchini, tommy toes, peppers. That was that one. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Hey, there you go. It's not. It's nothing like uh, eating something that you grew with your own bare hands. It's oh, good, it is. It's good wicked. Feeling. And you know, Teresa's right. It all just went in cycles because we spent a while where we didn't go anywhere. We might we go to the store once a week, and we were just didn't leave this farm. Then things kind of got a little different. We go back to school. We would yeah. teach a while at school, then our numbers would go up and we'd be a red county, so we wouldn't teach at school and we'd be strictly at home. And it's just bounced back and forth like that. But we're on a pretty solid run now of being at school. What do you think, six weeks? Yeah. Well, it's, yeah. Probably about six Maybe. weeks straight at school. That's good. So, That's so good. Uh, how did the whole online teaching ordeal go? You're the only teachers that I have talked to since all of this. So it's uh, kind of interesting to hear your perspective on it. Well, we're coming from two different places because she's kindergarten or no, or preschool, and I'm high school. So, oh you know, wow! I'm a social studies teacher, so I'm a lecturer, and it's easy to just lecture on Zoom, and you know, it's it's not that much different except you can turn your camera off and go to sleep when you're at home, and the students in my classroom don't have that option; they have to act like they're awake anyway. Well, you know, how, kinda, how do you teach pre-K if you don't mind? Yeah, me your so now, now that's a tough one right there. I didn't even think that would be a thing. Well, uh, you have to have wonderful parents who are ready to go and and uh, who are um, who are are physically there. You know, you can't get you can't have have this kind of thing happening. Yeah. Like what I what I do, you know, we have lessons that we do, but but. Each individual kid had a Zoom meeting with me to go over numbers and mm -hmm. like, you know, different levels of numbers, whatever you're doing. If you're just, you know, verbally, you know, verbally counting or, you know, up to, you know, adding, adding numbers together. Well, you have manipulatives. You work right. Well. You know, the parents had, I, I'd always yeah. tell them, here's what we need to have, have 10 things that don't roll. You know, that was a big <laughs> thing. <laughs> don't okay. roll. Uh, but then, and then also letters, math and letters was great. And, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, actually my kids made lots of progress. I, I was real pleased with it. Hmm. And one nice thing about it is I had their attention. I had their attention for that 25 minutes or whatever, how long it was. I had their attention, only theirs and without any distractions. Hmm. You know, that was actually kind of nice. You know, I never would have uh, actually thought about that because, yes, yeah, it's a one on one thing like we're doing right now. So, yeah, the attention span would be there. I've heard people mention that it may be harder for kids to learn. But if you look at it from that perspective, it, it would actually be maybe easier for a lot of. Well, them. But it's as long as they can do it. You yeah. know, some 10 minutes, you know, you're 
you're good, but you've got them. You got them for yeah. that 10 minutes. But, and then there's some kids, they'd be on there all day with you if you'd, if you'd sit there. <laughs> uh, but, um, but the parents was the key because they were on board. You know, they were prepared on their end. And uh, we met every time we we're supposed to. The, the, um, the things that they didn't get, they didn't get that, that socialization where you get to work out things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when we went back to, into school, uh, they had to have their own individual learning areas. Yeah. Okay? Because you couldn't share toys. So if you can't share toys, there's not going to be a problem. Right? There's no okay, problem to work saying. out. Yeah. Uh, now we can share toys, you know. Um, we're still, you know, we can be three feet apart from each other. <laughs> now oh, we're not that. sharing at the same time toys, you know. Yeah. But I can play with this toy, put it back, sanitize, and go to a different center now, which is pretty cool, pretty nice. Yeah. Uh, but now we have to, we can work out things like, well, I want to play at this center. Well, you have to wait because it's full now. But uh -huh. you know, so and so is going to find you when when we're done. So now we're they're getting that that working out um, um, lesson. mindset or what? Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, I know what you're saying. But they didn't have it all year, you know. Yeah. But, but they are getting it. They're getting it for as you know. We've got what six weeks with me. Yeah, you have six I think weeks we have left. six weeks left, so it hasn't been that bad. That's good. I mean, and also things are finally starting to get back to a little bit of normalcy here. Like you're saying, you got you're back in school now and three feet away. I didn't know that that was a thing. There's so much whenever it comes to what's going on. I can't keep up with it all. I couldn't keep up with it. Somebody had to convince me that that was the truth. <laughs> yeah, I had no really? idea. But, but that's is wonderful. Yeah. Uh, with everything kind of getting back to normal, is there anything that y'all two are looking back to getting to doing? Play music. Yeah. Yes. Well, well, especially with you, with you, David, releasing Kingsport. I know you've got to do the, the drive-in show and a few other things, but are you planning to do maybe a, a tour promoting that or anything? No, I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> I just feel sorry for Kingsport because it was just, they came out at the wrong time. I just think it went to a black hole and that's probably where it'll stay. And that's too bad because it was a good record. No, I, I think it was a fantastic record, man. And and also with the little uh, videos that you've been doing on your social media, pushing the songs and stuff, I think that that helps a lot. And with uh, everything opening back up, I think if you would hit the road with it, man, it would be awesome, especially getting to go, maybe like teaming up with pals somehow and getting some shows worked out at all the pals i, I have a bunch of questions whenever it comes to that record man well, well, well man. first of all why kingsport i love kingsport no disrespect to the people in kingsport it is a beautiful area but if i was going to name an album after a place kingsport wouldn't be the first place to pop into my mind you really? know so, so what's the special story behind kingsport I think it's obvious, Eli, why, why we chose it. Well, what what is it in your what is it in your mind then? No. <laughs> laid back. If you laid back shows are just pretty much a stream of consciousness. Me just blurting out whatever I'm thinking of and, and trying to be clever and playing off the audience. And so we're playing somewhere, and you know maybe we had that a long night or whatever. Or long, we were just tired. I just make up some stories, and you know we're all kind of tired. We played this show in Kingsport last night. We just got in late which was all a big lie, but it got a few laughs. So if someone laughs once, I'll keep saying it. So I kept repeating it show after show, and yeah. it just became a running gag. Like, you know, we're awful tired. We've been down in Kingsport. And I don't know why I said Kingsport. I did. It just <laughs> came up. Yeah. And so it became a little bit of a laid-back joke. And then I've got a couple of friends that lives in Kingsport, and I love pals. So I was just like, you know what? We'll just call the record Kingsport. It, it, we got to call it something. But so, so the pals that you took the album cover in, do they have any idea that that's even a thing? Like, did you give them a heads up? What's, do they even know what's going on? Well, <laughs> we decided, first off, I got a friend down who lives uh, in Knoxville. His name's Mark Arnold and he's a road manager. He's been road manager for Elizabeth Cook and uh, who's the guy from BR549? 
whatever his name is. I'm so sorry. Ah. I can't think of his name. It's, it's, it's uh, Chuck, name. Chuck, 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 Chuck Mead. Okay, and he, yeah. And he's a, he's a big time dude. He's been in the music world forever, and I've got tons of respect for him. And so, some way, I don't know if I mentioned it to him because I know he lives in that little area down in there. And he took a picture of me of the original pals and sent it to me. I said, "What's this look like at night?" So he sends it. And it's beautiful. It's all lit up and everything. I said, "Oh, this is it. This is perfect." So we made a trip. I think we we went down there just to do this, didn't we? I think so. We drove to Kingsport. <laughs> we set up. It, it, I took it with an iPhone, and we set up a tripod <laughs> with a timer. Okay, we set up a tripod in the parking lot. In the parking lot. Did you have like anybody watching it, or you well, just? I go in and I ask the one of the kids working there. I said, you know, we want to take a picture in here. I want to use it on a record cover. So they bring a manager over. And the manager, I tell him what we're doing. And they just went blindside. It's like, well, we don't care. Go right ahead. Yeah. So we got this on the timer. We would hit go, and we would run inside the restaurant real quick <laughs> and try to get in line. Ten seconds. Yeah, ten seconds. And we'd try to pose ourselves, and Whoa. then we'd run back out and see what it looked like. <laughs> and we did this four or five times. I mean, there was customers coming in. And one lady went kind it's of like mad. The, it's like the drive through yeah. parking lot. You know, like, like yeah. tripod, and then, like, here's the cars that – you know, I'm surprised. Uh, especially y'all dressed in character, too. I'd say oh, yeah. that was a sight for some. Nobody no, cared. no one even cared. <laughs> no, no. You, well, this is Kingsport, too. I mean, it's it's no. Kingsport. Wait, so, so that's where, is that the original Pals? Is that what you said? Yeah, that's like, the original. That's the very that. first one. Yeah. The original, like, very first one. Yeah. That's cool, man. A lot of people don't even know about Pals. I have to turn a lot of people on to it. Man, oh, that place man. is delicious. Oh, I've never eaten anything bad from there, but it's just great. No. So I started looking at, well, first off, after we took the picture, I got a hold of corporate and said, you know, we've done this. and We've taken this picture. Can we use this? And I'm like, well, let's run it through our legal team or whatever. Like, I doubt they even have a legal team. <laughs> but I finally got back a hold of them. He's like, sure, go right ahead. You know, print your record company or label. That's fine. And um, I tried to hit him up for that show idea. I said, well, maybe we get together and promote some. He's like, well, we don't really have much of a budget for that. But I thought, you know, I'd play for a hamburger if you Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I get one of them chili burgers, man. They're oh, hard man. to beat. Pal Sudden Service. What do y'all have a go to from there? It's like everybody that I meet that knows about pals has that one go to meal. I really don't. It's just any burger they have is yeah. great with me. And yeah. it's just good value. Yeah. And it's it's fairly quick. Oh, it's quick and the so. fries are the fries are awesome. Oh yeah. And the burgers, I mean, it's a good like round big burger. Yeah. So what do you get? Do you get that chili burger? Is that it? Man, I've tried the chili burger and I like it and all of that. But uh, it seems to be a lot of people like it a lot more than I do. Everybody freaks out about that thing. I just go with the classic double. Just yeah. but the fries, I have to get a large fry. Them things oh, are the hard to beat. <laughs> I don't know what they cr crack or something. I don't know what they put in them, but them are some good fries and just such a unique looking place. Like whenever, if somebody doesn't know about a pals and you try to explain what this place even looks like to them. They think that you're tripping or something. They they have no idea what you're talking about. Then you have to show them a picture, and they and they finally get it. It's, so it's like most like a Virginia Tennessee thing, right? Yeah, right in that whole Tri City area, and just kind of expand it out around it. And I guess there's probably nine or ten of them. I'm guessing. I don't know, but man, they're great. Yeah, they're yeah. There's one I think in Wise. That's the closest one for us, and I try to go to it every chance I get. Oh yeah, that's right. Wait, there's one in Wise somewhere near there. I, I just noticed that area. Maybe it's like Norton, Clintwood, Wise. It's one of those areas over there. It's about worth it, a drive. Yeah, every time I go to uh, Tennessee, I stop by there. It's yeah. on that road there somewhere. Yep. But yeah, So uh, with Kingsport, I, I love the uh, music videos that you've done off of it, but the one that uh, I, I got to watch it here before we hopped on air, the uh, – and forgive me, I'm trying to remember the name of the song. The one about Christmas. They only come around around Christmas time. Yeah. What was, I, I'm not from around y'all's area or anything like that. So I wasn't entirely sure what was going on in the music video. It seemed like it was a bunch of politicians that came to town for a coal movement. But I still wasn't very sure. I wanted to get the real story from y'all. All right, so what, what's going on in that music video? You know, that, that's, that's LBJ. And he uh, he kind of picked up the ball of uh, social programs, and he you know his program was a great society, and so he declares this war on poverty, 
and he came to Inez, Kentucky to kick off the war on poverty. So one of the very first scenes is he's going up on this porch with this old guy, this family, he's got a bunch of kids. And he did. He came to town and stood on that guy's porch in Inez and said, you know, this is pretty much unacceptable that people in America are living in these substandard conditions. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is they just went on a tour around pretty much Appalachia, just kind of highlighting what was going on. And, you know, it wasn't one of those hit pieces, I don't think, where they were trying to say, you know, let's look at these poor people in Appalachia and look how awful they are. He was just showing, showing that, you know, people are living pretty hard here in Appalachia and we need to try to help them out. You know, maybe build some good roads and infrastructure and let's improve education. You know, and you see programs like a Head Start, all this starts with LBJ. So all that footage comes from, uh, I just stumbled onto it. Uh, the LBJ library has that stuff on uh, film. And I contacted them, said, I'd like to make a music video using this footage. Is that fine? They said, oh, sure. Go right ahead. So I just pulled off. You know, I didn't really do the whole lot to sync it up. I just put the song on, let a lot of it play, and it just kind of worked itself out. But that's yeah. what all that footage is, is President Johnson and, and his entourage just touring around Appalachia. It, it was really fitting for the uh, music that went along with it. And and the words were just, it's it's so true about the people that, oftentimes move around here. I think that a lot of people relate to this song, but Kingsport, man, it was a great album. And, and I'm looking forward to seeing you on the road and uh, getting to hear the songs at live. I, I watched the live stream that y'all done a few months back there. It was good, but still, it'd be so good to see y'all live. Well, I can't wait. Was it just us two playing or what was it? No, it was, uh, I'm trying to remember exactly <laughs> when it was. Everything Y'all were in this like lit. No, you're at the burl. Yeah, it was the one at the burl. That was it. Like I said, I'm tired. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. It was the burl live stream, and uh, oh, it was fantastic. Yeah, but you know, there's nothing like the music being too loud and just the the whole experience of the live thing. You're right, and and it's been so long now. Uh, I'm going to have to relearn how to do it. So, uh, Teresa, are you going to be doing anything with uh, Luna and the Mountain Jets now that Laidback has a new record out? Are we going to get something new from Luna and the Mountain Jets? I'm trying. My whole my whole way of writing is uh, is is different from how I'm living right now. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah. I'm getting I'm getting pieces of songs, but uh -huh. I'm I'm not I'm not able to finish anything. It, it, that's been from the whole start of all this. Um, how, how does the songwriting process for you normally go? Is like, do you have to like be inspired by some stuff that is going on or? In... Usually, usually it's like what I, what I call it. It's a haunting. Like there's something that just keeps coming to mind. Yeah. And finally, I'll, I'll have to just, just write about it, but I have to be completely alone. I have to be alone to make mm -hmm. it all work out. I and, get what you're saying. And, <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm not alone. <laughs> <laughs> like he can't even be around like you know i just i i yeah i just <laughs> wait a minute i'm inspired suddenly <laughs> well i i two two uh, well, you, one thing that couples learn during the whole quarantine they learn they either love each other or hate each other yeah what did we learn yeah there, what did we learn dave <laughs> I learned that you can make a pretty good uh, egg sandwich in the morning. Hey, that's, yeah. That, yeah I, I've, been, I've been seeing all the uh, happenings that y'all had going on, though, and uh, y'all have seen to uh, be enjoying y'all's time out on the farm. Where have you got all of those uh, old hippie bands from? Uh, just over time. I mean, uh, I bought the first one. Gee, it have been late 80s, and I'm not smart enough to do the math. But I bought it, and then if you're a Volkswagen guy or you know anything about them, if you get one, you got to have more for parts. Yeah. So I just started buying up everyone you could find. And, you know, this is back in the late 80s, early 90s. You could buy them cheap. So I got a yard full of them. And now they're so expensive. Jeez, oh, Pete, I'd hate to try to buy one now. Yeah. That's, I've just collected them over time. So you got like, you got a few that are, like, up and running and stuff? Do you well, I've got one that was my main van that I drive, and I blew the motor up in it during the pandemic. Hmm. And I need to get either rebuild that engine or get another one. So if you, anyone's got a 2.0 VW motor out there, I'm looking. There you go. We'll, we'll, we'll be, be sure to get the word out for you. Oh, good. Hey, that Facebook trade and sell, that's where everybody puts everything. Oh, don't I know it. I spent yeah. way too much time on it. <laughs> that, uh, going back to Luna and the Mountain Jets, though, that was cool. Uh, the little shout out that Tyler gave y'all in the uh, Country Squire music video. 
Does, does Tyler give y'all a heads up that he's going to do stuff like that, or does he kind of surprise y'all? No, I didn't know. Did you know? I think we did know. Did we know that he Tony was... Moore had alerted us to us, right? Didn't did he? he tell us he was drawing a poster for it? I don't know. I, think... I, I don't remember having a heads up of it. Yeah. I, I just remember I heard it. Uh, I, can't, I don't remember how I heard it. Um, but I know it wasn't from Tyler, though. But it was like it was already it was already out there, you know. Yeah, well, Tony Moore's the guy who uh, did all the the art for that. What he animated the whole thing. Maybe it was. Tony. And he's become a good friend of ours. And he, oh, yeah. like, he's just an amazing artist. He's just off the chart. He'd worked on Walking Dead, and he just draws comics, and he's just a level up above everybody. Yeah, oh, it, it was fantastic, man. Yeah, he I mean, did I, great work. Yeah, like the where they're driving through uh, space there, and you see, like, yeah, I have to stop it a lot of times and read all the billboards, but just the little, the details, the little small details. You know, what that up. music video, man, is some, some nice gems in there. Oh, he, yeah. he, he helped out a lot of local folks and stuck them yeah. in there. It was really cool. Yeah. That was very sweet. Did, did he give you a uh, kind of a heads up to the All Yorn video where he, where he has laid back in there? Oh, we did know about yeah, that. Yeah, well, initially, I was going to be in it, like <laughs> physically be in it. Oh, really? So we went down to where they shot it. We watched them shoot all day when they shot the video. And uh, I guess they decided they weren't going to physically shoot me, but they were just going to animate me in for whatever reason. But, yeah, we spent the whole day watching them film that video, and it was just amazing to watch that process and how, how you make a big league video. It was cool. And he is killing it on the violin as well. Oh. He's doing yeah. a fantastic job. Would have never thought, but uh, everybody's picked up some new hobbies here during the pandemic. I wish I would have picked one as cool as picking up a violin and learn how to play that. Absolutely. He's done well with it. Have y'all picked up some new hobbies during the whole quarantine experience? Eating. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to be my chief. Was that new? <laughs> yeah, but I have took it to a new level, I think. Uh, I I, have you? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm playing different instruments now. i played played bass a little bit and drums what uh what what kind of bass like the stand up or yeah. regular just the regular bass guitar it's one of yours it's a fender music back, master it's very cool what made you want to pick up bass i've i've been wanting to try to play bass for for a long time and just never mm -hmm. never picked it up but i mean and it's not like i'm playing bass every day or anything it's just you know, Dad said, play bass on this one. Okay. Well, there's several songs that we play, and she'll just play bass lines on guitar. So she knows how to do it. So I just yeah. got her to actually pick up a bass and do it this time. And it's, it's cool. She could be a fine bass player. Well, I, 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 like I said, I can't wait to hear it. Are y'all going to be uh, doing any more live streams soon? I, I know that you uh, worked a lot with the fundraisers that were going on in y'all's yeah. area. And I got a chance to tune into uh, all of those. They were everybody that was featured in them done a fantastic job. But uh, have, are y'all planning anything anytime soon? You know, I'm not because I, I'm not a giant fan of them. It's, I don't, you know, I, I want to play live in front of an audience. That's that's where I feel most comfortable. And it, when those fundraisers come around, I mean, those are good people and those are my friends and it's a worthy cause and I never say no to those. But as far as doing them just to be doing them, I probably would, won't be doing any of them. I mean, how about what, you? Well, the kicking it on the creek one fundraiser mm -hmm. that's the most like i i don't know when i watched that fundraiser i mean both nights it was just like it was that same feeling of being there with your friends um it, it was just at a whole other level I don't, I don't know if it was because of everybody that was involved in it mm -hmm. or just the reason why it was happening but there was just something there was something different about that live show there was more more of a connection between this you know the screen and the person you know yeah. than than just other other um um what do we call it? yeah well no just like live streams yeah but i mean i'd be up for doing live streams it's just pretty much i'm just tired <laughs> <laughs> when I come home, it's just like, uh, you know, we'll have something that we plan. It's just like, you know, I just don't think so. Yeah. I, and I'd say especially uh, getting down to the nitty gritty in school years, this is when everything is going on and everything's crazy. So, yeah, I, I would get it. I couldn't 
I, I would, to be a teacher would be a very humbling job, but also a very busy one as well. I can, I can see where y'all just want to kind of relax at the end of the day. Yeah, and you're right. Is we're we're going into the crunch time. You know, a few weeks left, and you got a lot of material to cover. You got kids who are trying to get caught up, and it's it's pretty stressful right now. Have y'all uh, thought about getting on the road anytime soon, or are you just kind of wait, well, still waiting? About it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I've got, I guess, about five dates from now through October, and they're all outdoor festivals. So. You know, it's not going to be any prolonged thing, but every couple of weeks it seems like i got a, a show that will start in June. And, you know, we've left July open because we don't want to play. We just want to get in the car and just take off driving. I mean, if just, it's just, okay to do that, yeah, yes. Yeah, the pandemic hasn't yeah. surged back up. We just want to take off. Yeah, me and my wife were uh, talking about doing something like that, actually. Where are y'all? Do you have anywhere that you're planning to go or just m maybe some ideas? I want to go west. Oh, same. Same. Like – are you going like northwest or southwest? Maybe. You know, I've never been. Up <laughs> I would love to go up in that area in the North Pacific and plunder around a little bit, but I've never been up there. Yeah, I've I've only been southwest. I haven't been up to uh, states like Oregon and Washington, yeah, and Montana, That'd be cool. places like that. It, I wouldn't go right now with there with it being as cold <laughs> as it gets up there. But yeah, July, like you're talking about, oh, it'd be perfect. Yeah. So. Yeah, but hopefully it'll just it'll be okay to do those things i mean i yeah that, that's my thing i just want i just want it to be safe you know yeah. i want it, want it to be safe for us but I, I want it to be safe for other people as well you know yeah and, and i think that we're uh slowly but surely getting there it's a heck of a lot different than last time we talked for sure there wasn't a whole lot of hope at that point that things coming back to normal so, so I, I want to, uh, I, I love hearing stories about how bands got their names. And uh, I, I, I remember the laid back story from last time, but Teresa, I didn't get to ask you about mountain jets. I, I, I think I got into Luna, but well, actually I don't even know if I got into Luna. Well, my, my, hey, listen, I'm, my, I'm willing to discuss it all again. Listen, my, my, my memory is just not there anymore. So if I ask y'all the same question twice, it's, I apologize in advance. But where does Luna and the Mountain Jets come from? Mountain Jets is such a cool name for the, for the band. But where does all that come from? <laughs> well, when I first started uh, playing out, I was, I was Luna. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was, I was Luna for several years. And uh, then I got a phone call from, from a lawyer in New York. I believe it was New York. But anyway, uh, saying, you know, well, actually it was an email, sorry. I got an email from a, a, a lawyer, you know, pretty much just saying, you know, you, got, you can't use Luna because, you know, that's, that's who I represent. It, there's another band called Luna. Yeah. So, uh, so you know, you got to. You, you got to come up with something else. Cease and desist. Cease, yes. I had to sign papers. Oh, wow. But anyway, <laughs> so I was like, but the, you know, all, all people know me as is Luna. You know, I hate to lose that. Well, and so she, she just, she said, well, okay, you got to have a variation. So I, I was thinking up names and sending them to her. I was like, you know, how's this? How's this? You know, nope, nope, nope. Uh, and the, uh, and we were uh, talking with Richard Young from the Headhunters and, uh, and discussing all this. And he said, well, let me talk to her. So he gets on the phone with her. <laughs> she don't want to have nothing to do with him. <laughs> She's like, somebody's saying that they're representing you and all this stuff. And, and you know, yeah, he, he was trying to smooth things over. No, it, it didn't work out. But then finally he says, well, you know, why don't you call yourselves uh, Luna and the Mountain Jets? And I was like, it has a good ring to it, but how does he come up with Mountain Jets? Well, he, he said it was something about fighter pilots. Uh, was it? Oh, because isn't there a well? They use the uh, Appalachian area as a testing grounds a lot for a uh, flight. From what I've, I've heard. heard that, I've heard that before. Yeah, because it mimics the air, like our, uh, the Appalachian region supposedly is a lot like 
uh, Russia. So that's why they uh, use our mountains as uh, testing grounds. I'm not smart enough. I have no idea. I'm reading what somebody put on Facebook. Who knows? <laughs> well, well, then it's so. <laughs> hey, nobody's here to tell us we're wrong. So here we go. I heard that it's it's actually like, isn't it a weather thing too? Like a jet stream? Like there's a mountain jet stream? I don't know. Y'all are the teachers. Y'all are supposed to be the smart ones here. Come on, come on. I'm off the clock. <laughs> anyway, anyway, so so we we you know we took on that name. And, wait, a minute, let me say and, because I wait, think I think I'm right about this. Didn't we come up with Luna and the Jets because we were kind of saying Benny and the Jets, but Luna? Well, and the Jets? he he was talking about that because I thought like, that I was cool with that. Yeah, but you were. Not I think cool. it was when I think it was when within that conversation. Yeah. that it turned into Mountain Jets. Yeah, because I remember Benny. And, I thought Luna I and the Jets would, be, would have been funny. Well, well they just ain't got that same ring to it. The m m mountain has to be in there. Luna and the Jets. Doom, doom, doom. Yeah. Ah, that's, one, that's one guy I was uh, actually had tickets to see whenever uh, everything. Oh, oh uh, real? Elton. Yep. So I uh, had to give those up real quick. Oh, but, uh, uh, well, I want to uh, ask you about this as well, David. See, I thought the whole David Bowie gimmick might have been just for the first album. Like, I, I didn't get to ask you about that last time we talked. I never asked you about it. I thought, like, it was just for the, the song or something like that. I just, I, I don't know. But whenever an artist puts something out, all the fans interpret it different. But I thought, yeah. okay, it just has to do with that song, whatever. But then, man, your cover of Heroes was awesome. I never thought that I would hear a country version of David Bowie's Heroes. But what's the deal with you and David Bowie? Yeah, it's just so absurd in a way <laughs> for a country music singer who is just as backwoods and goober as he can be to be hip to David Bowie. I just think that's a great combination. <laughs> and so Bowie's always stirring around right here. And if I see any way I can interject Bowie into something Playback does, I'll do it. And I love David Bowie, and I love Mick Ronson as a guitar player, and you know, yeah. it's great. But it's 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 kind of tongue in cheek, but I love Bowie, and it gives me a chance to get to play some Bowie songs. You know, I got to tell you, when we were shoot back when I was in a band called Night Train, we had this guy with us. He was like our roadie and art designer and light runner and whatever else you want to call him. His name was the Colonel, or that's what he went by. Mm -hmm. And the Colonel had two. Well, he had a couple of great qualities. One. He could sing any song in a David Bowie voice. Didn't matter. You give him a song, and he could sing it the way Bowie would sing it. And we would just, he could entertain us forever by just like we'd name a song, and he'd do the Bowie version of it. <laughs> and so I would kind of do Waylon versions, the same thing. Like, you know, let's name a song, and here's what Waylon would sound like doing it. And mine wasn't nearly as good as him doing Bowie. But if you think about it, <clears throat> any song is great with Bowie singing it. I don't care what it is. You name any oh. tune and let Bowie sing it, and it's going to sound great. So there's just always been that thing in the back of my mind that it's cool to do Bowie stuff, and I'm, I can't do that, but I can sing a little bit like Waylon. So I think all that kind of ran together and made it happen too. Yeah, I just like I said, I never thought I would hear it, but it sounded awesome. Why'd you pick Heroes though, out of all the Bowie songs? Well, it's one of your favorites. Well, I, I'll just be honest with you. And the last time we talked, I think we were talking about Motorhead. Yeah, yeah, we talked about Lemmy. Motorhead does a great version of it. Have you heard Lemmy do Heroes? What? No. Oh, my I, God, yeah. Well, yeah this, that guy was so interesting that I'm still learning things about him after however long it's been since uh, he's been gone. Like, he was a big video gamer. I learned that. Yeah. Had no idea. But, I, no, I, I, I've never heard their version of that. Well, we, I, we just watched a, a Lemmy documentary probably a month ago, and I'm going to send you the link to it because it's a great, yeah. it. it's the greatest thing. And I guess he liked to play video games wearing super short shorts. And they would... Yeah, the, the the one interview that I heard, he had a uh, he had on like real like basically swimwear guy, uh, speedo type deal with a uh, spider webs on it. Wow. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, if you the Motorhead kills heroes, and my version is really kind of a rip off of of the Motorhead version, except I do an alternating bass line like country. But yeah, it's real close to what Lemmy does. Yeah, I was actually going to ask y'all about this because uh, last time we got to talk about uh, Lemmy and Motorhead, how you got to meet Lemmy, that blew my mind. And Teresa, how you got to meet Jack White. 
That really blew my mind. I, I, <laughs> I know the, the, the meeting went as it did, but still, that is, it still is so cool to me. And y'all have done so much. You've got to meet like people that I look to as legends and idols and just music icons. And you've got to do so much, but is there still some stuff like on the bucket list? Is there, is there still like some goals in your music career that you want to accomplish? I mean, you've done it all, almost. <laughs> We've really done it all. You've played the Ryman. You've played the Red Rocks. I mean, it's, you've done a lot. We are so lucky. We're so but but lucky. so is there, like, is there still any goals left or anything? Or have yeah, you basically crossed goals. everything off at this point? But it's not like we had a set of goals to begin with. We just kind of flop around from day to day and that stuff fell in our laps. Yeah. You know, I just want to keep making nice. records and, and putting stuff out as songs that I like to hear. And that's that's my goal is just to yeah. put out three or four more good records that, that I can be proud of. That's all I'm trying to do. Have y'all thought about doing it? Like, well, getting back to the heroes, the uh, comic strips that goes along with the music video i thought was very cool are we going to get a laid back in honey comic book anytime That'd soon awesome. that yeah. would be that would so be awesome cool. hey miles is awesome. responsible for that stuff yeah. you know and hayden can do it he yeah could, he could yeah hayden needs to stop worrying about his world and start worrying about <laughs> our world because <laughs> <laughs> i'd say it would take a long time to draw a comic but he could do it yeah, it would be really cool. There's so many talented artists around the area. Uh, I follow this guy on Instagram, and I can't remember his name right now, but you have on one of his shirts. He does a lot of art for uh, for uh, people around our area. What's that guy's name? Jimbo Valentine. Jimbo Valentine. Yeah, this is the Jimbo shirt yes. here I'm wearing. A tornado takes you <laughs> I off. don't know what yeah, happened. I'm sorry. What, what was that? <laughs> Just this gush of wind. I've got a question for you. Oh, yeah, yeah, shoot, of course. Well, I know that you do stand-up comedy. Yeah. And it's a whole lot, you know, the pandemic has has hit hit you all in your profession a bit differently. Mm -hmm. Now, or, or maybe not, I don't know, but my question is, how, how has it affected, how has it affected stand-up comedy and does live streaming does you know has that helped with that have you done it no no everybody is different i know comics that do the whole live streaming process but i'm i'm like you david i that's not for me whenever you especially stand up music i could almost uh, music's a little bit different because you're just playing of course the crowd reaction is good but with music uh it, you don't, exa you don't exactly need it. Whenever it comes to comedy, you need the laughter. You need somebody to tell you if you're doing good or if the joke sucks. And if there's nobody there to tell you, you could just bomb and you, you have no idea that you're even bombing in the first place. It's just, I think with stand-up, you need that face-to-face -face interaction. It's, a, uh, it's an art of the people. And you're basically a uh, a funny motivational speaker, almost to folks. And if you're talking to a big group of people, it almost needs to be in person to get that same message across as well. And we're just like y'all whenever it comes to shows. I haven't done one in about a year and three months now. I think it's coming up on. It has been quite a while. There's the, uh, some people do drive-in shows. I've had a few buddies do those and people honk the horns or flash the lights if you're doing good. And to me, it's just, it's, it's not the same. And to some people, if they want to do that, that's fine. But I don't want to make, for me to do a show where I live at for comedy, it's a three hour drive in every direction. Yes. So I don't want to have to put all these miles on the road and hotels, yada, 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 for a car horn to tell me I'm doing good. But with everything opening back up now, there are a lot of, there's a, a lot of comedy clubs opening back up their doors. A lot of them are at half capacity now, and we're getting the chance to do shows. So uh, 
hopefully, I don't know when this is going to air, actually, but by the time this airs, maybe I would have already done a show because we actually got some planned for the month of April. Oh, cool. Nice. So, yes, it is very, very exciting. I just think that that's something that needs to be done in person. Oh, I agree. You need that feedback, don't you, to know what's going on. Yeah, but, but stand-up comedy, it's a... Uh, I, I think that's something that the world desperately needs right now, especially with everything going on and, and music as well, too. This is, that's why I was so happy to get a laid back record with all this going on. And I still, I'm still jamming out to uh, the Luna and the Mountain Jets as well. We, we, we need another one, though. Uh, there was a song off of your album there, uh, Luna. I have to get it back here. Is it called Worth It for Worth? Something with worth in it. Oh, wait a minute. Excuse me. Do, 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 do. No, you know. Oh, what for? For some. What for? I, I was going to say. I, I was thinking of Buffalo Springfield's for what it's worth. And I was getting those two mixed up in my head. And yeah, but what for? Ha, for some reason, I. That, that's been on my daily playlist here lately. Oh. That's, one of, that's been one of my go-to songs here lately. Well, uh, golly. I mean, that's, that's one of those happy songs that really has a dark, <laughs> yeah. a dark meaning with it, you know, because it's just like, you know, you pretty much given up. It's like, you know, uh, this bad situation just keeps happening. And each time this situation happens, you know, I'm a wreck, but you know, you get to the point where it's like, well, I, you know, I'm, I'm done. Yeah. But, 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 but that's what I like with it being a, uh, had and a sad and happy song at the same time is I, I, whenever it comes to music, I like songs that bring out emotions in people. And uh, whenever I'm just in that headspace, whenever I need a song like that to relate to, I love turning it on. It's kind of the same thing with uh, Tom Petty's Mary Jane's Last Dance. Everybody rocks out to that song. It's such a cool song, but it has such dark lyrics that a lot of people that listen to the song probably don't even know what it's about. They probably have their own ideas just because of the title. But uh, yeah, I, I, love, I love music like that, that... Uh, you can get different emotions out of. I think that's what makes it like REM so great. Yeah. Because I don't know really anything that dude's saying. But you don't have to. No. And songs, like REM songs mean a lot to me, and I love to hear them, and I don't know what he's saying. And you don't have to know. It just, it moves you, though. You know, she's talking about Walk Four being a dark song, and I don't think of it as, as that at all. It's a happy song to me, and it's got a happy guitar part, and I'm just... I'm always just smiling away playing what for. I think it's great. And she's just having a mental breakdown. <laughs> but that's what I do. I mean, like I I write something and then I I don't know if it's I'm meaning to or if it, I'm just real lucky. But typically, it's like there's several ways you can go with it, you know. Mm -hmm. And and hopefully you latch on to one and it's you know something good for you. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. So what? It, you can, so what? It, I'll go ahead there, David. I'll go ahead there, David. No, I'm just, I'm just rambling. <laughs> well, I did want to ask you. Well, I did want to ask you one thing because I didn't get to ask you this uh, last time. Whenever it comes to the iconic uh, laid-back country picker picture that's on all the T-shirts and the bumper stickers and all of that, how did that come to fruition? Did you plan that out, or is that like just a picture that somebody took? And where just how did that become your go-to symbol almost? Well, everything you said, it's a little bit of all of that. Picture's probably ten years old. Would you say, Teresa? I don't know. We was it was two thousand seven, I think. Is that right? When we, when we went out, we were we were just touring around out west with a friend of mine named Rob McNerlin. We were playing a backup band for him, and Luna was doing some song, uh, set. And, you know, there was no laid back at this point. I was just playing guitar. And we were in Niederwall, Texas, on the 4th of July one night, and we were very tired. And we played a show, and we were outside, and people were shooting fireworks, and it was just insane. 
and Teresa was just taking some pictures, and she took that picture of me that night, just standing there in a hat, you know, watching fireworks go off, pretty, pretty road weary. So we next so we, day we went next day we were picture picture a while. That's a pretty, pretty cool picture. And, and I don't know. We saw it again. We saw it again. That's that guy. That's, that's a picture of the way back country picture. Because you know there's a way of those way back, back country picture. Yeah. Yeah. To me, epitomizes any guy who's just out playing a lot of country music and honky tonks. And I just kept calling it that. And it's such a cool picture. I thought, well, that'd be a great picture to have on a shirt, maybe. Just wear it. No explanation. Just that picture. But I never put it on a shirt until many years later, and my daughter had talked me into it. We went to an ice cream place that had a sign up said, we'll make any shirt for 25 bucks. So I gave them that picture, and they put it on a shirt, and it looked awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And I sported it around a little bit, and I showed it to, we were getting ready to play a show opening up for Tower. Were we opening for Tower? Well, we were one of the bands. Yeah, at Wattsburg. And, I mean, this is back before Tower had blown up. And Tyler saw it, and he said, well, that's a great shirt. I'd wear that. So I got Tyler one of them, and he started wearing it, and it just started that little underground movement. And people started contacting me saying, I'd like to buy that shirt, and it just took off and become the little hip underground secret to know that if, if you're wearing that shirt, you're in the in crowd. So. Yeah, every time I'm going I'm down, down the highway and I see somebody with a uh, laid-back sticker on the back of them, I'm like, oh, that's a cool guy right there, or gal, yeah. or gal. I'd see who's driving first. <laughs> It could be Sean Wadding, so you got to be yeah. careful. <laughs> hey, Sean, a shout out to him, man. I didn't even recognize him last time. Oh, I was no there. kidding. He's that that guy amazing. has slimmed down. Oh, yeah, he looks great. And yeah, too, I wish I was that lucky. I've done nothing but gain weight this entire time. Well, now, Sean's worked hard. He, he he's, Yes, he has. He's taking it very seriously. Yeah, he looks great. And, you know, his band is rocking right oh, now. Yeah. He's got a rocking band, and they've been putting some stuff out from Fat Cave Studios, and, man, he's just sounding been great. Great, great stuff. Great. Love Sean. Yeah, I, I didn't get a chance to make it to the uh, Leonard Skinner show that uh, y'all done there, but every video that I've seen, it was phenomenal. What was the one video that's being shared around a lot with uh, y'all on stage with Sean? I'm trying to remember the song that you were covering. It was at the Leonard Skinner show. <sighs> My what mind. It, I can't remember the song he did. No. You know, I got to tell you about that show, too, because that's a record that's really important to me. I had that record growing up, just a live Skinner record. And I loved it. It was one of those records I would put it on and listen to it at dark, like, like in, a, in a dark room. And you felt like you were at the show. It, you know, it was a live show, but it really yeah. felt live when you listened to it. And so to get to actually do that and play all those songs, I got to think, I was. that's one of the most exciting shows I've ever played in my life. And I mean that. I, it, was, it was unreal the way I felt doing that show. Well, it, it seemed uh, the environment of, it, it was at the Burl, right? Yeah. The environment there was perfect for it. I mean, I, I've only been to that venue twice, I think, in my entire life. Yeah. But I, I could see that album being just a perfect, well, that place being a perfect atmosphere for that album. Well, it came from a conversation that, that Josh Nolan and I were having, because I don't know, we were just talking about that record and how cool it was. And one of us said, well, you know, we ought to recreate that and, and do a version of it and get people to sing. And we kind of blew it off. But then I think Josh persisted and said, no, we really need to do this. Mm -hmm. And, and that's what made it happen. And, man, it was a crack band. Everyone was so good on it, and everyone did such a great job. ton of fun. Yeah, I, I can't wait for uh, live music to come back. With, uh, is, there, is there anybody that y'all have been listening to uh, during the pandemic, maybe some new people that y'all have discovered? What are y'all listening to right now? I'm thinking what? Well, I'll tell you something we watch, and this really uh, probably a lot of people watch this, and it got us through the pandemic, is Mike Campbell. Oh yeah, Tom Petty's guitar player. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. He puts out a song about every day, and he just—it's him sitting in his living room or sitting on his porch, and he takes a guitar, and he'll either do a Tom Petty tune or he'll do a song he's written, or he'll cover some obscure Sam the Sham and the Pharaohs song. Yeah, and I really look forward to Mike's songs every day, and I, I really didn't—I really didn't know that was a thing. I have to go check him out. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. He, I mean he's done it for a year solid. Almost every day he puts out a song. Huh. And it's really been cool. H have y'all ever heard of a guy named uh, Billy Strings? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I just discovered him the last few months, and I, I can't stop listening to him. He's off the chart, isn't he? Yeah, he is. The, the songwriting is what gets me. He's a fantastic guitarist, don't get me wrong. But the, the songwriting abilities, that's what really gets me whenever it comes to Billy Strings. And it seems like that movement, whenever it comes to uh, what – 
some of us call real music, it's uh, getting a lot more popular. I don't, I don't know where it started. A lot of people say Tyler, but I think Sturgill was doing it a little bit before yeah, that. Yeah. But now you have uh, Sturgill, Tyler, uh, Culture Wall, Billy Strings, and all of these are the, the big people right now. And that's, it's exciting to see real music on the charts again. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is cool. When I first heard there was a guy named Billy Strings who was like a red-hot guitar player, I thought it was kind of a joke. It's like, really, this guy's calling himself Billy Strings because he can play like crazy. But then I saw a video and went, oh, oh, yeah. it doesn't matter what his name is. Jesus Christ, he can play. I, I don't know if that's his real name, if his real last name is Strings, but if it is, that guy, God gave him that last name for a reason. He was... I'm telling you. <laughs> And, and, his dad, and his dad is just as good too. If you get a chance, like uh, him and his dad do some uh, shows together, and oh, his dad is the one that has taught him how to play. So, yeah, it's it's cool to see those two go at it. But yeah, he's he's great. That, I'm trying to think of as far as new people. I, I don't generally listen to a whole lot of new music, and that's a horrible thing well, to say. Now, but, Sonora, Sonora yeah, May's got a new record. record I love it. And uh, Morgan Wade. Yeah, I, I seen uh, some people around our area sharing her latest album. I think it was last week or the week before, and I dived down that rabbit hole and I cried a little bit. I, I got to be honest, her music will do it to you. Wayne Graham. Wayne Graham. The record. Yeah, I, and uh, them guys right there, they killed. What was it? One percent? Ain't that what they named it? One percent juice. One percent juice. juice. Yeah. yeah. Those dudes. Great. Man. And the album cover for that too. That was. That was wild. I don't know who did that. I don't know either. I'm not sure. Maybe they, it had a European flair to it. Yeah, whenever it comes to like a new like new music, I'm not really listening to anything that's on the charts. It's been a lot of uh, Spotify and YouTube here lately, just going by recommendations. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I've been really diving down a rabbit hole. Culture Wall has really grabbed me here lately too. It kind of annoys me though, because the dude is like five years younger than I am. And I'm like, where? Where have I went with my life, and how did he get that voice? That's what got me when you first yeah. meet him. He's not that big of a man. He's kind of a small. Oh, have y'all met met him before? He, oh yeah. Oh yeah. And oh, just I, talking to him, you know, I I wouldn't think that that voice would come out. Come wait, out. Wait, so so whenever he's like just like regularly talking, he still has that voice. It's not. It's not that deep. No. Okay. When he starts to sing, it, it's yeah. like you know he's was, just kind of a mild mannered like, Canadian guy, but man. Jeez. Yeah, that was wild to find out that he was Canadian. Never yeah. would have thought that. Yeah, he, he, he fooled a lot of folks, but he's... <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the uh, meme that you put on Facebook a few uh, days ago about Music Row, seeing that if it produces anything of context. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that, here. <laughs> that dude that does, uh, I think I'll just stay here and meme. Yeah. He, Came up with that, and he's brilliant, man. That guy, he he does some funny stuff. Yeah, that was funny. Between him and little Bubby Child, there's plenty of entertainment <laughs> up there. Are you hip to that? What was that? Little Bubby Child. I've never heard of it. Eli, I'm I'm in just like I'm in my own little world right now. I just went out to Lexington uh, just two days ago. I've been up my holler for the last year and a half now. And going to Lexington was like going to a futuristic world for me. I forgot places like that existed. And you know, the Beatles know broke up. Did you hear about that? What was that? The Beatles broke up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm, still, I'm still catching up. I'm still catching up. I'm going to send you just a, a, a link of all this stuff you need to do to poison your mind. Well, I, well, be sure to send me the link to the uh, Lemmy documentary. I also didn't know the. I did, also didn't know he had a Nazi tank either that yeah. was you know what that's the same documentary did you watch that i watched that little clip that's all i've seen oh. well, that's in the documentary yeah it, yeah he, to go drive a, one. he was all about it such a badass i mean like of, of course lemmy of all people has an actual tank yeah <laughs> well i'll go back you know i just get on these motorhead tears from time to time and i'll go back and watch some of those whacking concerts from you know over in europe wherever it's germany i guess and they just rule the roost, man. They're always just so good. From You watch a Motorhead from 15 years ago or Motorhead right up before Lemmy died, and they take no prisoners. They're, they're always great. Yeah, and such a nice guy, too. I mean, 
I wish Pro- I was talking to him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'd say you didn't want to piss him off. But well, I, was, yeah, I was just mortified. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever it comes to real music, that's why I'm I'm just excited now that we're getting some real music with some actual uh, quality to the uh, the production and the lyrics. Like Tyler's album, I loved that it was mostly instrumental there until the last song, and the message with the last song that he done too was just oh, phenomenal. Yeah. But but he, but he showed that uh you know that the instrumentation of a song is just as important as making these hit records like he has been. He had Jesse Wells helping him out and and arranging everything. You know, Jesse just a fountain of knowledge, especially for traditional music and those old time songs. But Tyler, like when he was up here and we did the whole goat drop thing, he was right in the middle of of his uh, internship of trying to get good on fiddle. Yeah. But he would play all these songs for me. And and like each song, it's easy to say, well, all fiddle songs sound the same. But not to Tyler, because he would tell you the history of the song, who wrote it, what it was about, and like specific parts in the song sort of mimic what was supposed to be going on with the backstory. And Tyler knows all that stuff, and it's just phenomenal when you know it. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot more to it than just listening to Tyler play fiddle a little bit. And that's the way with those old-time songs. I mean, it was storytelling almost without words, and that, that, that takes a good musician to pull that off. Yeah, he he done a phenomenal job. I'm hoping that he kind of... uh sticks with that style on his next record i'm really excited you mentioned uh this earlier teresa sonora her new record um the the name of it escapes me but but i've heard the little previews that she's released here and there and i watched a behind the scenes video that she done a few weeks ago about the process of making the record it sounds beautiful well you know it was recorded at uh with um with wayne graham Mm -hmm. at their studio, uh, uh, she had, I think it's just been out a couple of days. She had a video with uh, the song Colors, I believe this name of, the, of it. And it's just beautiful. It's the sweetest thing. It, it's got her mom on there and she's yeah. braiding her hair and it's, it's just so sweet. You know, and that whole album is just, you know, revolving around love, you know, just experience in love and, and sin in love. And it's just, it's so needed and nice. Yeah, that, that's that's what I love about uh, <clears throat> her and Tyler's music is, is it's so relatable. I mean, you're listening to the songs and you can just uh, picture yourself in a lot of those scenarios. And uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, her show up at, uh, there's this huge venue around here. I am so brain dead today. She has a show coming up. Wally's Last Resort. Yeah, yeah Wally's Last Resort. Yeah, I'm going to get a chance to go up to that, and that's going to be my first time uh, seeing her live. Yeah, so I'm really excited about that. And that's just a cool place. It's It just has a very good – you've never been there? Or you no, have? never, never been. First it's time. It's a good vibe. It's, it's – I love – I love that place. Yeah, it's uh, – with everything starting to get back to normal now, it's uh, – I have heck, I haven't been to a concert in – since last March, actually, that, that was the very last one. So it's been a year and a month. It'll be nice to finally get back out there. And I hope to see y'all doing something soon when, whenever you can and everything starts opening back up. I'd love to see y'all back up there on stage. Hey, we'll, we'll be there. Yeah. We'll be there. We'll be looking for you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'll be there. But y'all, thank you for your time. It is, it's nice to finally see y'all again. It feels like it's been forever. Great seeing you. Yeah, you know, it's always, a, always a pleasure. Yes, it's always nice to talk with you. And for uh, anybody out there that wants to check out everything that you have going on, where do they go to do that? Laidbackcountrypicker.org for me. <laughs> Get on Facebook. if You you, you can go to lunaandthemountainjets.com, but you'll find something from, not, what, 2016. <laughs> my, my project for this summer is to get my website up to date. Nice. Well, uh, it was right around, it's right around the corner, so uh, we won't have to <laughs> wait. Long. Hey, I, and like I said, I'm I'm still bumping that record. I'll be listening to uh, uh, What For here on the way home. And y'all too, thank you also for the amazing music that you both release. I mean, I, Luna, I know this. Well, Teresa, I know it's been a while since you released the first Luna and the Mountain Jess album, but it's still timeless to me. And Kingsport, David, 
it was phenomenal, man. I can't wait to see it live. It's going. It's uh, to me. Uh, I I don't have a favorite song off of it. I was going to try to tell you my favorite song, but it's not going to happen. Maybe Thank Country you. Jesus. Country Jesus, Country maybe. Jesus. I love that tune, man. Thank you. I like that song a lot too. It's it's one of those I got to be careful when I sing it. I don't want to cry too much. Yeah, yeah. that's an emotional song. Yeah. It's a, it's a beautiful song. But, y'all, you release uh, some of the best music to come out of this area. Your local uh, legends and icons to people like us. Well, to people like me and a lot of other folks around here. So, uh, just thank y'all, too, for existing. Hey, man. Thank you for doing what you do. Because yes. you put us out there for people to find out about us. And it takes people like you to make people <laughs> like me. <laughs> I, I, I love it that we end every interview like that. But, hey, y'all, too, thanks again. All right, Thank see you, you. buddy.